Camden, New Jersey is the reason I can't get scared anymore. A car backfiring, slasher movies, Halloween horror nights, rising gas prices. None of that stuff phases me anymore because of my years spent working in Camden, New Jersey. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Camden, it's a southern New Jersey city located just across the Delaware River from Philadelphia. It lacks the general charm and classiness commonly associated with Philly folks. Camden's a city where you roll through stoplights because if you stop your car, someone will take it. And when I worked there in my early 20s, it was the crime capital and the murder capital of the United States. Fun fact. By day, I worked as a reporter for a daily newspaper. It was not unheard of for me to go cover a homicide that I heard about on the police scanner, only to arrive at the scene before the cops had gotten there to solve said murder. And by night, to make some extra money on the side one autumn, I took a seasonal $7 an hour job haunting the battleship New Jersey on the Camden City Riverfront. Yes. The Halloween season production was called Voyage of the Living Dead. Now, I did theater when I was a kid, so the audition process of scream like you're being dismembered limb by limb was a breeze for me, okay? I know how to make some noise. I'm from New Jersey. After passing the audition process to work aboard the haunted battleship, I was subjected to the training process to become a professional ghoul for hire. We were taught how to do our own special effects makeup, ghostly white faces, sunken eyes, and a lot of fake blood. We learned how to master that vacant, distant look in our eyes like we've really seen some shit. We workshopped various types of moans. Uh. Uh, 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 uh. You know, kind of like that. And we were taught how to haunt the dreams of our paying customers for the rest of their mortal lives. At the end of our training process, our director stood before us reading off final logistics and casually added, all right, you guys, that's it. You're ready to scare some people. Oh, and I know most of you are returning creeps and ghouls. Just a reminder to you all that Someone here will inevitably be punched in the face by a scared customer this spooky season. It happens every year. A customer will get scared and lash out with violence. So just don't retaliate and know that it will definitely happen again. It always does. My colleagues nodded matter-of-factly as though this was a super normal work update we were all aware of, whereas I looked horrified. Whoa, 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 someone's gonna punch one of us in the face this Halloween season, and it's not a matter of if, but when and whom among us will be punched in the face at work this season. Naturally, I was both petrified and also very broke, thanks to my recent graduation from journalism school. So I suited up in my scary garb and hoped to the devil himself I would not be the paid ghoul to take a hit to the jaw this year. My colleagues and I received our spooky assignments based primarily on costume sizing and creepy talents. There were silent scarers who lurked in hallways, people in straitjackets rocking back and forth in front of staticky television sets. There was a bloodied pregnant mother in a nursery whose zombie baby had eaten itself from her womb. There was a swinging live cadaver in a body bag. My performance was a solo venture. I believe it was thanks to my scary good star power. With wild hair and a shrieking scream, I would greet patrons by yelling in their face, running to an electric chair, strapping myself in, flipping the switch, and repeatedly electrocuting myself while screaming and laughing maniacally <laughs> until they left the room, and then I would quickly and quietly reset for the next group. I gave my performance my all yelling and working myself into a frenzy. I quickly realized on our preview nights that I was going hoarse and I put myself on a bit of a vocal rest. I kept lozenges and water nearby. I vowed to maintain the commitment to my ghoulishly good performance while slightly dialing back my haunting wails in order to make it through my nightly screaming fits without fully losing my voice. It was going to be a long October, and I could not continue my electrifying nightly monologues without the vocal power to really deliver the captivating performance that each of our petrified patrons truly deserved. All the while, I remained constantly terrified 
that one of our customers would find my performance a bit too compelling and sock me in the face. <laughs> I wanted to move people with my performance, but not move them to committing assault. <laughs> Just like to have a good time. I wasn't even sure how I would react to being punched in the face as a grown-up. I was so paranoid by the looming thought of it that I assumed I would simply pass away if it ever happened to me. <laughs> Our customers were young couples on dates, groups of friends, confused tourists who thought they were getting a normal tour of a historic battleship, <laughs> only to realize it was a haunted seasonal event. One night, a Boy Scout troop visited and then stayed overnight for a camping event on the battleship. We assumed they'd be a bit older, like Eagle Scout age, who would definitely be old enough to punch one of us, but it turns out they were like seven or eight years old, and we scared the pants off of them in the same place they had to sleep overnight. <laughs> Safe to say they probably didn't sleep and were most likely scarred for life by the resident ghouls who were just doing our diabolical duties in exchange for minimum wage. Uh, <laughs> As the Halloween season wore on one evening, as the whispers traveled through the battleship, my swinging cadaver and a body bag friend from the room next door came over to tell me, hey, did you hear about Emily? Yeah, she got punched in the face tonight. A guy was on a date and he got scared and started swinging and he just popped her right in the face. Yes, I thought to myself. <laughs> Yes, I was so worried my performance would be so compelling someone would punch me in the face, but instead they punched that bloody pregnant mom whose baby had eaten itself out of her womb in the face. And that inevitably meant I would not get punched in the face. I had escaped unharmed. And for those of you still thinking, Julia, you also could have easily been punched in the face, my answer to you is no. Our <laughs> I could not. <laughs> Our director said someone gets punched every year, and to me that truly meant that once the zombie mom got hit, I was safe for the season. I know, ghoul math. <laughs> Halloween came and went, and my haunted gig ended, and soon after I decided to move on from my newspaper reporting career and from New Jersey altogether. But I'll never forget that the thing that scared me most wasn't, you know, being from New Jersey, or reporting about crimes, or interviewing crooked politicians, or rolling through stoplights at 2 a.m. on the way home from work. No, the thing that scared me most was the constant looming fear that I would be punched in the face while fake electrocuting myself in front of Boy Scouts for $7 an hour. Thank you very much. Julia Lechner, everybody.